So as you can see, I'm moving some of the stones to get them in order, make my life easier. In the wheelbarrow, these are all the, these are all the tiny bits. So in between the two courses of the wall, these are the, the sections that are really important. They cram in behind the stones and they keep them steady and level. So it's, it's good to keep them all in one spot. The kids sometimes go around and pick them all up all the little bits of stone because when I'm, when I'm building new sections of wall you just cram it all in nice and tight keeps it all nice and solid uh, these are all the really good face stones I've, uh, I've, obviously there's, there's even more in this pile here but I just went a bit wild at the end there thought just get it down so there we go a massive section of the build done remove the old gable I can hear somebody giggling here look at who's giggling Hey, hello. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Get some work done. I am. Hey, I am. Some work done. I am. It's taking shape now. We haven't brushed the joints, obviously, yet. There she is, the Guardian. We're just about to run out. We have got extra batteries now, but she's doing a sterling job. Hmm? Mm. Sterling. Yeah. There's still bits of air. Uh, concrete I'm going to knock off yet but I'll get to it let's just see I'm going to get told off again Anne, if I want your camera work I hope this uh, stabiliser is working in this thing there it is let's try and get a picture the gable has gone now there will be a ridge all the way through an intersection so since we last filmed well the weather's just been horrific uh, wind, rain, uh, terrible wind, really bad, virtually impossible to work outside. So I have finished pointing that wall there and um, this bit is back pointed and ready to be finished. So today is a bit hit and miss but the heavy showers aren't meant to come until this afternoon, this evening so I'm going to get what I can, try and done it, I'm going to try and get it finished to be honest. It's driving Sam and I mad this now. <laughs> oh gosh, who decides to do the outside work on a stone building in April? But yeah, it's just the way it's fallen with the grant and we need to get the walls stabilised really as much as possible. Although I do feel it's strong enough to take everything. So Sam's plan is to join the other side of the buildings up and now he's dropped that uh, gable end, put the lintels in, we've got the lintels ready to go, there they are, and before anyone gives me grief about them being concrete lintels, <laughs> that's just what we have to use because of cost reasons, uh, we will be covering them with some timber, so they will look like the originals in the end, so this was one that Sam 
cleaned up. Uh, we're going to leave as many in as he said last time as we can. I'm going to crack on and try and get this done. This whole wall is done so really this evening we need to beat that back brush it back um, because that's been on for a couple of days now and then we'll leave cover that with hessian and leave it to dry for a couple of days and then we'll do the same sam's been beating it back and brushing it back at the top there at the apex where we did it the other day and um, hopefully you can see a difference between the bottom half that we haven't done yet and the top half which is pretty much finished I think and maybe a little couple of voids that we've discovered that will refill but I think it looks good actually knocking off the snots. I'll tell you what, that's a lot softer than uh, than what the gable was. This has only been what, about three or four days? Yeah, I bet days. that's good. Coming off okay. But as long as you can get it to fluff up, like that. Yeah, like this. And then give it a little tickle. Yeah, I think it's been on a bit too long, so... This one's a bit too long, isn't it? But then some people leave it 10 days, don't they? Everyone does it different. So, another lesson in line pointing <laughs> that we've learned is if your mix is too wet, it dries like that, very much whiter. Um, so that's something that we've learned that the mix needs to be pretty dry like crumbly I would say um, and that bit wasn't <laughs> it was quite wet so that's going to be a bit of a pain we might have to redo there but for now I'm just we're just going to leave that for now and move on yeah, you're going to see me do a time lapse of this uh, scraping back very boring I suppose but it needs to be done it's a lot of process with lime as we mentioned you put it in back point it if it's big voids put it in wait a day or two scrape it back brush it back and yeah keep it covered with hessian to protect against frosts heavy heavy rain and strong winds so yeah it's a bit of a fickle creature is lime
I've scraped back most of it. Don't film me doing it all in time, that's boring everybody. It's a bit dark because it's raining, so I need to cover it back over in a minute with Hessian, but um, some of the bits, uh, it's been left too long and we, it's really hard to scrape it back and it really hurts me. <laughs> I'm aching. So like down there, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but yeah, there's still quite a lot of, they call them snots of um, lime that haven't been scraped back. And then there's these areas where we recently scraped back so you can see it's sort of going a bit paler as it dries. This is the end that I did literally yesterday. So much easier to scrape back. I mean, it's all a huge learning curve for Sam and I. But I think what we're learning is that <laughs> we're leaving it too long. From the moment we apply the lime water, we should literally the next morning be scraping it back or brushing it back or whatever. Otherwise, it ends up too hard, like down there, can't do it. So Sam's going to have to get the wire grinder discs on that, because it's too hard to do it by hand. Yeah, so my hands are killing. This has been me for the past few hours. My shoulders hurt, but there's something really satisfying about doing it this way, and it's the proper way. Lime is the proper way with stone buildings, but God, it's difficult to do. And I'm feeling pretty pooped right now. So I'm gonna cover it back over with the Hessian. And, you know, fingers, we know for the next side, <laughs> literally, small bit, scrape back, small bit, scrape back. I think that was the thing, I think I was just rushing too much and not paying attention to the, um, the other part of the process, which is the scraping back. Uh, lesson learned. Uh, that's how it's going to be. Lessons learned all the way along this. So Sam has gone off quickly because we need to put some gates up and some fencing really. Um, and the weekends we kind of keep free for gardening stuff and ground landscaping stuff. So fence and gate needs to be put in. I've got some uh, two plum trees there and they just arrived the other day which are cherry trees so I need to get those in the orchard which is going to be over there I've already got apple trees in there and pear trees so yeah hopefully in time in years to come you know when we're old and grey we'll be getting fruit on those trees well the rain has stopped so just before we get well we got a bit more sunlight now so just thought I'd get a quick post in <laughs> so why not a bit of post creep nice uh, eight foot post there took a bit of digging two foot in the ground so I shall just get a quick mix on a bit of concrete and we're all done there's one post in we're gonna have another post here and then I don't know if you noticed over on Toby's, we're having to climb over, we're having a, a fence put in there, but we've got two eight foot pen, uh, say it. two eight foot fences, farm gates, and that'll uh, stop the dog running off and the chickens. Yeah, chuffed with that, a bit of concrete. So these are the gates, they're here. Some of the galvanising's come off, so if anyone's got any tricks of uh, what we do with that, I've just been sanding it. Anyway, I've laid the gates out. I've measured between the brackets to replicate where my post is going to be. That one's in now. The props, props can come off now. So that's my the two by one on the floor there. That's my template, and this is what I'm using so that I can get it straight across. But yeah, there's me, there's my template. So it's just time to dig another hole on the other side and get it set in, and then fingers crossed I've measured correctly and this is how you do it. <laughs> and uh, the gate should shut, I'd say half an inch, an inch in the middle, but I'm gonna put some 4B1, bolted on with like exhaust brackets, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll work out the locking system, but for now, let's just get the hole dug, get the post in, get the spacings right, and then get them swinging.
sun bag over the mixer. It's fantastic. I was wrapping it up with like just a sheet, but perfection. Keeps it dry. And the winds die down. Oh, it's glorious. Let's go and have a look at the, uh, it's going to be the front of our homestead. So these are going to be in for many a moon. I'll probably put some creosote on them, but just let them go nice and nice and solid now. I'm not going to swing the gates probably till next week. I mean that it's about two foot three the hole, so it's, it's a good depth in into the clay post fix and then about that deep of uh, concrete. Um, but yeah, I'm proper chuffed with that, and they're absolutely spot on as well. Let's have a look. Big test will be when we swing them. Hopefully, if I've not messed up, because we've got quite a few wagons coming with building materials. So, I don't think it'll be a problem. It's 16 foot post to post, but the actual real life is 14 foot because of where the tree is. But I'm actually going to put my dry stone work to hand there. I'm going to build a little three foot, four foot wall, do my own little copings. I've always wanted to do a dry stone wall, so I'm going to do one. But well, we've got these ones as well. These, uh, we're gonna have these sort of all the way up. And then Becky's got some, some nice sort of inch square mesh there because the dogs and chickens keep just wandering off. So, um, I see the dog. Not, not like wandering off, disappearing, but it goes into uh, other people's uh, property basically water drips into the boiler because when we got this delivered the, the lad hit a, a branch and it, it smashed the top of the flue off so I botched it with some metal wire and tapped it back but look at this little thing here we splurged we splurged well it wasn't that expensive but <laughs> hopefully it's the right diameter and I don't have to nip it and flare it and but we'll see but while the weather's like this I'm just going to quickly grind it off pop it on because we don't want the boiler getting any more wet it's doing the job yeah. Now's warning because I've said Toby. As soon as, she, as soon as she hears me say Toby, she runs. So we put a football in the field to see if he played with it. No, he just kind of looked at us as if we were completely bonkers. Hey, I've not seen you. So Toby has given me a bit of a worry for the past week because the farrier came and he's been a bit hoof sore since the farrier came. He's loving it. He's coming over. No, I've not stroked him for a couple of days. He's still a little bit limpy. He's up, it's alright. He's been having a roll around. He talks. It's going to be great to get the hard standing down in here. Because this whole area, all the way up, it's all going to be like, how deep? Seven, four, five, yeah. So we need to say a huge thank you yeah. to everybody oh, yeah. who donated and to the GoFundMe. Fun. We were we were just overwhelmed. Yeah, and Toby's Toby's going to absolutely love it. So we actually got another gate, haven't we? Going in there, another nine foot gate. No, I think it's ten foot actually. And then we'll get the machine in, get it all on. We've got what is it? What's it called? Geotech. It's not to ram, it's like some other ground sheet, so we'll cover this whole area. Is it four metres out? Yeah. 35 metres up. We've got big plans to make a really nice hard standing area. 30 tonne, haven't we? 30 tonne of stone. Yeah, so thanks to everybody who donated, because we were a bit worried about putting a GoFundMe out there. We might yeah. get a bit of abuse, but we everyone was just so generous, and we actually achieved our target within two days within two days because we put it out on the socials the day earlier but it after it went on youtube it was done oh, the big within a few hours so thanks everybody yeah. really appreciate amazing. it amazing so once the um once we can get a gate in the weather's a bit better not as much rain we're gonna lay this down and give him a really nice little I hair can't wait area. to see it we're gonna put a fence up as well yeah i'm gonna do a technic fence because it's bloody pricey but we'll, we'll get a fence up the side there so that he has got a proper paddock area yeah, bless him. Seems I'm sure, a bit more I'm sure like we'll probably move him out of this field at some point. Let the uh, let it all grow back up. It's a nice little meadow. And go in someone else's field for a couple of weeks and then come back. It'll all be nice for him. Yeah. Probably while we do the work. I don't think he'll like the digger in there. And then eventually, hopefully, we get him oh, a little yeah. friend once he's been gelded. 
Yeah, you don't want to so, be biting anyone. So yeah. thanks everybody, really appreciate it. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You're definitely a bit more friendly now, aren't you? Yeah, it's coming on. Yeah. Yeah. My fear of the equine is going. <laughs> <laughs> Toby speaks to me, Jedi mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're a bit so, we're going to leave it there this week, I think, aren't we? Yeah, leave it there in the sunshine. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. more of this to come. Oh, it'll come. It will. It will. <laughs> the big lad. Eh? Come on. Can't wait to see him with a friend. Nell no, just trying to hear Nell will do anything <laughs> to get in there, I think. <laughs> right, guys, we will see you next yeah. week. See you next week. Yeah. See what that brings. <laughs>